Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about writing radicals in the simplest form. So how do we know whether or not a radical is in simplest form? Well, if a radical is in simplest form, that means the radicands, which is the number in the radical sign, can't have perfect nth powers as factors other than one. So what we mean by that, for example, is if we're taking the square root of something, then if it's in simplest form, there isn't going to be any factor of that number that is a perfect square other than one. So no four, no nine, no 16, no 25, etc. Right? Or same thing with cube root. Then there couldn't be any eight, right? Two cubed is eight or 27, three cubed is 27, etc. Right? Um, the next one is that radicands can't contain fractions. Now, the great news is that we know how to combat that. If a radicand does contain a fraction, we can separate the fraction via the quotient property that we did, that we discussed in the last video to combat that, but we do need to make sure we do that if that's the case. And then the last one is that no radicals are in the denominator of a fraction. And so we might need to, um, you know, take top and bottom to a power or something like that in order to, in order to combat this, right, depending on the situation. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, okay, so let's write these in simplest form. So this one here is not a fraction, nor is there even a denominator other than one here. So the only possible thing that could be wrong with A is that there could be a factor of 54 that is a perfect cube. So what are the perfect cubes? Well, uh, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, and then 4 cubed is 64, which is already greater than 54. So we just have to check in this case whether 8 or 27 is uh, a factor of 54. Uh, now let's see. So 27 times 2 is equal to 54. And so that's a problem. That means that we need to, um, we need to change this and so, that, so that that isn't the case. So my next step here is I'm going to write that the cube root of... 2 times 27 is equal to the cube root of 54, uh, right? Because we know that, uh, that 2 times 27 is 54, so we're just replacing it with this multiplication question. Uh, then using the multiplication property, uh, or the product property rather, we can change this to cube root of 2 times cube root of 27. And then the cube root of 27, as we know, is 3, right? So this is just 3 times the cube root of two. And that would be our final simplest form of this here. Now let's say that neither eight nor 27 or anything else did evenly go into 54. If that had been the case, we could have just left it as is. Uh, all right, let's try this next one. So this next one, let's first identify uh, what problems we might have here. So we don't have any um, fractions inside any single radical, but I did notice here that we do have a denominator um, that has a radical sign, so that's a problem. And then also we might potentially be able to simplify these further. Uh, so these are both to the fifth, uh, fifth root, so we need to figure out um, if, if that's the case or not. So let's start with what is two to the power of five. So two to the power of five is equal to 32. So 32 is not a factor of 16, right? In fact, 32 is twice as big as 16, so it can't be. And 32 also isn't a factor of 48. And then three to the power of five is gonna be bigger than both of them. So that first one actually doesn't apply here. The only thing we need to do to change this is we need to make sure that we no longer have a radical in our denominator, and right now we do. So what I'm going to do is I'm first gonna just rewrite this as 48 to the power of 1 fifth over 16 to the power of 1 fifth. And at this point, it's probably clear how we can get rid of it, that if we multiply top and bottom by 16 to the power of 4 fifths over 16 to the power of 4 fifths, then that is going to uh, that's going to be good. That's going to work for us. Because because uh, recall that whenever we multiply um, two exponents with the same base, we add up those exponents. So then we're going to get 16 to the power of 5 over 5 in the denominator. And then in the numerator, we're going to have just fifth root of 48. And then fifth root of 16 to the power of 4 like that. 
And then our very last step is we're going to say, well, 16 to the power of 5 over 5. That is the same thing as just 16. And so now, now we no longer have any of those problems that were discussed before that we had. So there we go. Uh, all right, here's another one. It says cube root of 250. So for this one, um, there's no fraction, nor is there any denominator that has a radical in it. So the only possible thing that could be making this not its simplest form is this number 250 could have a factor that is a perfect cube. So what are the perfect cubes? Well, two cubed is eight, that's a perfect cube. Three cubed is 27, that's a perfect cube. Four cubed is 64, that's a perfect cubed. And five cubed is 125, that is a perfect cube. And looks like we have a winner there because 125 times two is 250. So there we go. That means 125 certainly is a factor of 250. So we have a cube root of 2 times 125, which means we have cube root of 125 times cube root of 2, because we can separate those. And then cube root of 125 is just going to be 5. So this is 5 times cube root of 2. And there we go, that's our simplest form, because two itself certainly doesn't have any factors that are perfect cubes other than one. All right, uh, next we're gonna try uh, this one over here. So this one over here is the quarter root of 162 divided by two. So there's a couple ways we could do this here. Uh, we could decide that we're going to separate these and take each part of our quotient to the power of, um, or sorry, yeah, to the power of one fourth or quarter root in other words. Um, but one thing I notice about 162 divided by two is that actually gives us 81. So the other thing we could do here is we could just say, oh, well that's 81 and take the quarter root of 81 and the quarter root of 81, well, 81 is actually uh, a perfect quarter root, right? because three to the power four is equal to 81. And so this is just equal to three. Now, had we done it the other way, we would still end up with the same answer in the end. We would still get three, but it would just take us a lot longer. It's much simpler to just do this division and then recognize that three to the power four is 81 and solve it that way. Uh, all right, well, feel free to um, ask any questions you might have in the comments and we'll see you for the next one.